George Floyd's murder energized and ignited a movement all over the globe. That was the Reverend Al Sharpton speaking at a commemoration service earlier today in Minneapolis, the city where one year ago today, 46-year-old George Floyd died after he was arrested by police and the arresting officer knelt upon his neck for nine minutes and 29 seconds. There was video of this incident that went around the world. And there have been a lot of discussions about how that video needs to be shared, obviously in a very careful manner, because it is traumatizing for people to watch, especially people of color, black people, to see that footage. It was revolutionary footage in that it sparked off, as Reverend Sharpton said, demonstrations and conversations right around the world about systemic racism, about police reform, protests, both in the United States, in Canada, in Europe, right around the world. And so on this day, it's important to reflect on what happened a year ago on the killing of George Floyd and where we stand now because the conversations need to keep happening and real actual change needs to happen. It can't just be conversations. Uh, Part of what the Reverend Al Sharpton was saying today was that, you know, there needs to be continued legislation, changes happening at government level, systemic changes within our institutions for actual change to happen. And I think that's been a theme of a lot of the conversations we've had over the last year when it comes to systemic racism. Yes, we need to acknowledge that it's there, but we actually have to move towards changing that system. It's not good enough to just talk about it. And I think that that is one of the biggest points from this last year where we need, we require change and we require people to speak up now and look at so many issues through a different lens that maybe they haven't before. And joining me on the line now to speak a little bit more in reflection on this last year and, you know, where we are now is Fareed Khan, founder of Canadians United Against Hate. Fareed, thank you for taking time out of your day. I know that it's been very busy for you. You've been speaking to a lot of folks, so thank you. Uh, Well, thank you for having me back. It is, uh, I think, a somber day and also one where a lot of people will be looking back to kind of measure the changes that have happened and uh, in this last year and and obviously somber when you think about George Floyd and the life that was taken from him and of those of his loved ones as well. Well, yes, I think uh, somber is uh, the correct word to use. Um, I think there's a lot of reflection going on about uh, what we've seen in the last year. Um, George Floyd's murder caught on um, a cell phone video uh, went viral around the world, and I don't know what it was because this was not the first time that a police officer had shot a black man and had been uh, caught on video, but there was something last year that just caused the public to erupt, not just in the United States, but in Canada and elsewhere, and it ignited this movement to combat racism and systemic racial injustice, not only in uh, in policing, but in society as a whole. Yes, for sure. And I, I think that so many conversations have been had. And, and, and I, I think back to the last year, especially at this time last year and in June, uh, when so many of the demonstrations took place, uh, there was this level of discomfort uh, that so many people were feeling that they had not experienced before. And I spoke with um, uh, Dr. Kathy Hogarth from the University of Waterloo about that feeling of discomfort at the time last year. And she said, get used to that discomfort, sit in it, because black people and other people of color have feel have felt that discomfort every single day of their lives. And now is the time for us to lean in and to have conversations and to listen. Exactly. Um, and, and the listening is the place where you start. You may not like what you hear, but you have to listen and you can't, uh, you can't deny the lived reality of people who are facing um, racism and hate. Um, these, are, 
these are things that have been built into our society because, you know, people don't like to talk about it uh, very often, but we have to admit we live in a settler colonial society. And that society was shaped and created by men who had the view that uh, because they were white and because they were Christian, um, you know, they were the superior uh, people. And anyone who wasn't white or Christian had either better get, uh, get on board or get out of the way. And if they didn't get out of the way, then they were going to be removed forcibly. And that's what happened to Indigenous Canadians. Uh, on this continent, and it's what happened to people of color, blacks and other people of color. Basically, their realities were shaped by these people, and this has continued well into the 20th and 21st century. And I think uh, now this realization has come about, and uh, the people who are in positions of authority and power had better listen, because if they don't, then they will pay a price. I think that that uh, whole idea of people in positions of power uh, being more apt to listen now, uh, it, it, I'm very heartened by that. But I realize uh, we can't, uh, you know, rest on our laurels. Uh, there has to be continued work and people calling each other out. Uh, when you see an injustice, say something and raise a red flag for it. And, and that's a big deal, too. Uh, having uh, a change in perspective and really thinking, I think, too, of the consequences of an action taken down the road. Yeah, yeah, um, correct. And, uh, you know, people have to understand that any meaningful change that has ever happened in society has not happened voluntarily. It has been the result of the hard work of a lot of people, and it has required sacrifice. Um, uh there's a uh, there's a meme which I uh, which I shared on Facebook and I have repeatedly shared it and it says justice and freedom for oppressed minorities has never been freely given by those in power it has always had to be taken through protest civil disobedience and at times revolution um, we obviously don't want to get to the point of revolution but uh, the people as I said the people in power had better listen because otherwise. Uh, they will face something that they don't like. Well, Fareed, thank you so much for taking some moments for us this afternoon to share your thoughts on this day and, and to reflect on the last year uh, that we have experienced. And, and I hope that, you know, everyone listening today uh, from communities of colour, uh, BIPOC individuals, that they take time for self-care because there is a massive emotional labour uh, load that is that is thrust upon individuals in those communities. And so on a day like today, when there can be lots of triggers and f- footage of traumatic events i hope that everybody is taking care and and you know saving some time for themselves as well yes well you're very correct in terms of uh in terms of the emotional load because it is emotionally and mentally draining to be constantly having these conversations and and you know continue to tell people you know in the case of george floyd yes there was a conviction for his murderer but that is not the end of it there's still a lot of work to be done And we need all Canadians who believe in equality to come together and help uh, to do that work. Well, Fareed, thank you again so much for your time and for the emotional labour that you uh, spend with us on this program. And uh, a great pleasure to have you back on the air with us. I look forward to the next conversation. Thank you again. Take Take, care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. That's Fareed Khan, founder of Canadians United Against Hate, speaking about the first anniversary of the murder of George Floyd. 46-year-old man lost his life in Minneapolis a year ago, and his death set off global conversations, global conversations about systemic racism and the need for change within our society across so many different levels. And so our thoughts, of course, are with the family of Mr. Floyd on this day, but also members of the BIPOC community. and. Again, to anybody who takes time to educate and to share their lived experience, thank you for doing that. Because it is not easy. And as Fareed said, it it can be exhausting to have conversations like this over and over and over again. So thank you for sharing your lived experience. We need to take a break for traffic and weather, and then we'll be back.